Okay. This is a video. And I'm Susan Mesley, your professor. Uh, folks are not, you know, able to show up, it seems, um, with any regularity at any given time. So I'm going to try a short video where we talk about Bailey's Cafe because it's a fabulous book and I'm so happy to have a chance to read it with you. Um, so this is the second Gloria Naylor novel that we are reading together. Um, it's probably my favorite. I think it's incredible in the range of characters it brings together, um, you know, and their experiences, how their experiences um, are so very dramatic and yet the subtle spectrum of gender, of um, moral action, of ethical action, um, of <clears throat> success, right? What does success mean? Uh, integrity. Um, it's pretty incredible, right? Uh, there are people who live on their own terms in vastly different ways who populate this book. Um, there are people who embrace uh, womanhood, right? Who uh, find strength therein. There are um, folks who um, inhabit their manhood gently um, and uh, with a series of negotiations um, that give us hope <laughs> for masculinity, right? For masculinity that is not the toxic masculinity that we all know so well these days. Um, so I love this book and I'm gonna talk into a video camera about it for a while. I, I think it's still recording, so let's see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna just begin with a few words to get us, to get us in the mood uh, from the beginning because um, yeah, no one showed up last week. We're supposed to be in the middle, but that's okay. Uh, this is pandemic uh, madness and uh, everything is negotiable, everything. originally for this book, but it looks like an epitaph. Um, it's a verse. It's a poem. Hush. Now you can hear it. It can't be far away. Needing the blues to get there. Look, and you can hear it. Look, and you can hear the blues open, a place never closing. Bailey's Cafe. Where is Bailey's Cafe? That's a question I asked uh, on the first discussion board uh, and Gabby, who made a valiant effort to answer it. I very much appreciate that. I have to tell you, it took me a couple of different reads to, uh, you know, to, to feel like I could say where Bailey's Cafe um, is or isn't. Um, let's look on page 27. Um, this is when Bailey comes back from World War II. Okay. And um, he meets Nadine again in San Francisco. All right. And he's standing there on the wharf uh, with San Francisco behind him. Beautiful, amazing city that I really like San Francisco. Visit more than the one time I was there. The surf beating over and over against the edge held me, held me. The fog had thickened so that I could no longer see the water, but the sound was there. Sushing, sushing. What do we do when the party's over? I knew life was going to be very different, a different prayer. Could there have been a different prayer? And I felt it just wasn't worth it. Before Hiroshima, it had definitely been worth it. I still believe this country had been worth Hiroshima happening. But at the very moment of Hiroshima happening, it all stopped being worth it. You get a man like that, with thoughts like that, start 
staring out over the edge. The only world worth existing for me in that white shroud was the sound of the surf. And I already knew what the surf was bringing. It's a shame. It's a shame. A hand reached through the fog and touched my shoulder. There's a customer waiting, Nadine said. Startled, I turned around, and she was standing in back of me, and in back of her was this cafe. The scarred old counter, peeling linoleum, a haphazard line of wooden chairs and tables at the front window, greasy white smoke clouded around us from the hot grill. I stared at the spatula in my hand, and I could hear the sound of the hamburger sizzling on the grill. It was burning. Cow flesh was burning. That was me, not Nadine. And without thinking, I flipped it over. We were in business. Make virtue of necessity. I never changed the name of this place. When I found myself in here from that wharf, wharf in San Francisco, the name Bailey's Cafe was painted across the front window in those same red letters trimmed with gold. And I saw no reason to remove it. Because of that, folks think my name is Bailey. And I see no reason to tell them otherwise. These people aren't my lifelong buddies. They don't need to know my name. Some of them think Bailey is my surname <clears throat> and they'll call Nadine Mrs. Bailey. And she'll answer to that as much as she'll answer to anything. Nadine isn't particular about what they call her, as long as they don't expect her to get up from behind the counter too often and serve them. Not that my wife is lazy. She's helped me make a lot of improvements over the last three years. She sewed the red checkered curtains herself and went out and found the brass rail to hang them on. The double door frigidaire was her idea and so was the jukebox. It's just that Nadine feels that folks shouldn't get the wrong idea about this place. If we start serving them too readily, they'll begin thinking, actually in the business of running a cafe. Forget how it happened. They stumbled in here. They'll start looking for us when they're hungry. And then when they don't find us, they'll start asking questions. Hey, wasn't this place here last month when I came by? I could see if you just closed down, but the whole damn building was gone. Life's too short then. Time trying to explain the obvious to the idiot. If they can't figure out that we're only here when, we, when they need us, they don't need to figure it out. Necessity is virtue, right? Um, maybe you'll remember uh, from Chaucer, from the Knight's Tale, this repeated uh, juxtaposition of the, two, of the two, necessity and virtue. I guess whoever Bailey was, if there was a Bailey, he knew this place had to be real, real mobile. Even though this planet is round, there are just too many spots where you can find yourself hanging on to the edge, just like I was. And unless there's some space, some place to take a breather for a while, the edge of the world, frightening as it is, could be the end of the world, which would be quite a pity. And pity is another concept, feeling, emotion, affect, if you will, that we might want to talk about at some point. But at, at this moment, I just, I guess, through this video, through uh, asking you to look back over these pages and just to re, uh, uh, remind you that those are basically pages 27 and 28 that I read. Um, when we ask the question, where is Bailey's Cafe? Um, the simple answer um, which is not simple, but the simplest an answer is on the border of the edge of the world. It's a sort of emotional space, right, that, um, that these characters, almost entirely African-American characters, um, although there's some variation, uh, can find, do find, um, on their way over the edge. And Bailey, the host, himself, um, uh, is on the edge, is on the edge of a sort of personal and national crisis 
uh, crisis of faith in his sense of national identity, in his sense of Americanness, in his um, his moment of realizing what he's been asked to do, to risk his life and to kill others, uh, and for what. Um, but it brings him to this place, a smaller place, um, a smaller place that uh, is also um, a more virtuous place, okay? And so I guess what I'm trying to suggest here is that um, in some ways, Bailey's Cafe is the space where necessity and virtue meet. If there were no Bailey's Cafe, um, these amazing people who have, uh, these amazing characters really, right, who uh, expand our ideas um, of what it means to be good, what it means to be feminine, what it means to be strong, what it means to live on your own terms, what it means to be competent, what it means to be real. Um, they meet where necessity, utter need, desperation really, um, and virtue um, excellence, beauty, integrity, where those things come together. So let's think about this context. 